Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. Before we get into the video, I would like to thank two new sponsors of the channel. First, we got a new member, MP. Thank you very much for your support, I appreciate it. Second, we have a donation of five coffees that will not be exchanged for tea at all, I promise. That is a very generous donation of someone. Thank you very much, both of you. Now, let's get back to the episode. Today, I think it's a great day to add images to our game. Let's go! Before we start, this channel have a Discord server where you can discuss and ask questions about the tutorials of this channel. Or maybe you just want to swing by and say hello. We will also use GitHub throughout this tutorial. There you can check the most recent code, but also code from previous episodes. That comes in handy when something works differently on your side compared to what you see in the episode. And for the people that want to go the extra mile to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee page and also a membership option on YouTube with some basic perks. With that being said, let's get back to the episode. In the last episode, we created our game loop. First, we talked about why we would need a game loop in the first place. It does make the game far more constant with a game loop than to have to click each time we want the game to update. We also added a simple printout to our log to see how stable the FPS is. And it's very stable. We also talked about delta time and how we can use that to make sure the game runs the same speed regardless of the amount of FPS the targeted phone have. But now it's time to get some images into this game. In this game, we will use the assets provided by the users Pixelboy and AAA on itch.io. It is a free to use and also a free to redistribute asset pack that contains all that we need. I even checked with the author before deciding on this asset pack. There will be a link in the description below if you want to check them out. It's a very well made asset pack with a lot of stuff. If you use it, give them a small donation or a shout out. Things like this takes so much time to make. When this episode goes live, you will need to download the images you see me use in the video. But you don't need to go to this site and download all of the assets. The images and of course the rest of the assets that we will use will be found on GitHub, correctly named for our purpose and in the rest folder of the project on GitHub. And of course I will only add resources that we actually use in the project. In this asset pack there is a ton of stuff, but we'll focus on drawing the player first. That's, the, that's our main mission today, is to draw the character that we choose to be our player. And in this asset pack they have made it very simple for us. We don't have to uh, edit the sprites, we don't have to build any sprite sheets and figure out how the animations later on works. It's all done for us and it's very well made. So. I think we will use the Red Ninja 2, that's what I'm gonna choose. And in here we can take a look. This is the sprite sheet of the Red Ninja 2, but let's go back, they had a preview. Here we go, here is all the different characters and their face logo also that they have made, which is very cool. So there's a lot of different characters that we can use, but I think we're gonna stick with this guy right here, Red Ninja. Two, which is this one, so that's how he looks in the icon or the portrait, if you will. And these are the sprites. So let's use that red ninja. And I will of course drag this uh, sprite sheet into our project, into the drawable folder. Like, just drag, I hope I don't remove it, I don't. And when you do drag assets in here, make sure it ends up in the drawable folder and not in the drawable v24. It can happen or any other folders, it needs to be in the actual drawable folder, which it is, and then just, okay, boom, we added it. But Android doesn't like uppercase character in the rest folder, so we will right click this one and uh, refactor, rename, and I will name it player underscore sprite sheet. So it's the same name and now we can use it in our project because if we try to run it and use it it's going to give an error because you cannot have uppercase letters in the drawable or in the rest folder android doesn't like it so that's why we need to rename it with just lowercase letters how do we now draw this player sprite sheet or any sprites of the sprite sheet we could go to our render method and call canvas.drawImage, no, 
draw... Well, we need some way of drawing this image, so we need to store it in code somewhere. We can't just have it here and then expect it to work correctly. So we're going to start by going to our main package here and right click and add a new package. Oh, package right there. And uh, we're going to call this entities. Entities. And entities are just a general name for a character, a object, a projectile, maybe even, etc. So we're just going to name it entities and keep a lot of our entities in the entities package. And then in this package, we're going to create a new class, but it's going to be an enum. And this enum is a way for us to store the image, any type of data uh, associated with that image. For example, the player. Maybe we want to know how much health the player have by default or starting. The size of the player, the speed of the player. A lot of different data we can add to the character. So a enum is a perfect way of storing things that's not going to be changed. Just static information that we need to use whenever we use said object or data or whatever. And we're going to name this enum uh, game characters. And we're going to add the player first, but we can also add enemies, bosses, NPCs, etc. But they all have a very similar structure how we add them. And if you want to know more about enums, I'm going to leave a link to it in the upper right corner somewhere there. And you can check it out if you want to familiar yourself with enums a little bit more. And we're going to start this enum by just saying player, because we want a player data or player type in this. And done. Semicolon. But when we create a type in here, we can also associate values to it or resources to it. And we want to bind this player with the player sprite sheet. And the way we access resources in Android, if we use the default uh, environment that they have set up, which is not bad, it's actually good. We say R for resources dot. Here we now are in the rest folder, so we can go drawable. We can go layout but it's in our drawable so drawable then dot and we should have our player sprite sheet here which we do and it's an integer meaning a, a value is associated to this sprite sheet so when we say the value we want the sprite sheet so it's automatically set up for us so just player sprite sheet and save and now we get a error and the error pretty much means that we need to create a constructor for this uh, enum. So let's do that. Poof. Game character int player sprite sheet. And not player sprite sheet is not a good name. We go with resource ID. Then we can create a private bitmap. And we're going to name it sprite sheet or sprite sheet like that. And the bitmap is the default image object. So if you want to draw an image, you draw the bitmap, which is an image kind of. So whenever we want to draw an image, for example, in our game panel here, we say C dot draw bitmap and it's asking for a bitmap. Think of it as an image and then position, etc. So that's how we're going to draw images. The way we're going to load this sprite sheet is by just saying sprite sheet equals we need some sort of method that can take in the resource ID, which points to the sprite sheet in the drawable folder, and turn it into a bitmap. And there is a method for that inside bitmap factory dot decode resource. And we're going to give it or take the first option here, resources and integer ID. And we need some way of pointing to the resource folder here. And to point to these resources in here, we need to get the context that can help us point to the resource folder and all the resources. 
And the context we use once in, yeah, here we go, once inside our game panel and then we just send it away. So we don't really use it, it's just, it's just there to keep our view functioning. But in our main activity, and the context is getting created in our main activity, so private static context game context. And this game context is getting created by equal this, or we set it to game context equals this. And then we need a public uh, public context get game context or public static context get the game context. And now, wherever we are inside our project, we can just say main activity get game context dot get resources now for the resource and the rest ID. So our sprite sheet gets loaded by using the bitmap factory method called decode resources. There's a ton of methods there, but we just need this one. And this method requires us to get the context to get the resources in our project in here. And then we pass in the resource ID, which is the specific ID we want. And the way we get the context is from our main activity, which is created on our or in our onCreate method. So we just create a field here, a static field that contains the game context, and then a getter to get the context wherever we are inside our project. And we can actually hide this part and we can hide the imports as well. So it's easier to see. Now that we have loaded our sprite sheet, we don't know if it works, but we do need a getter to get the sprite sheet so we can draw it. Public, it gives an option here, public bitmap get sprite sheet, which is what we want. So we're just gonna auto make that method, which is just a simple getter. And now let's go ahead and see if we can draw this image. We head over to our game panel class and the random square inner class, this entire section right here, we can remove. We can remove, uh, yeah, we can remove this section here and just keep the if action down event. We can remove this iteration of squares in our update, in our render, uh, that, that, that red paint, we can keep, we might need it later. We can remove this array list as well. And the random we can keep for now. We might use random a little bit later to get some random values. And now inside our render here, we can add some space here. We can start draw images and just say canvas dot draw bitmap. And we have the bitmap in game character class dot player dot get the sprite sheet. So now we have the bitmap and all we have to do now is to determine where. So let's see 500 pixels and then 500 pixels and let's give paint null. And let's see how that looks. And look at that, there we have it. Our image or our sprite sheet of our red ninja. But this isn't 100% the way we want it. Yes, we get the Sprite Atlas and it's being drawn. Perfect. But it's... I think it's too big. The size of our window or our phone is 1080 by 1920. But those characters or those sprites, individual sprites, are 16 by 16 pixels. And I don't think that they should be this big in regarding the size of the phone. So let's take a look at the sprite sheet and see what's going on. It says it's 64 by 112. Just by looking at it, I don't think that we can get about 18 maybe of these in height to take up 100% of the height of the phone because Let's say it's 100. 100 times 18 is 1800. That should easily fit inside here. But maybe after six of these and it's full or seven. So it's clearly bigger 
than we anticipated, or it looks bigger. So let's take a look how big it actually is. And once we loaded the sprite sheet, let's do a sysu or system.outprintline with and then plus sprite sheet. Let's see, get with. We have a different functions already or different methods, I should say, in our bitmap that we can use to get the size, scale it, rotate, etc. A lot of things, but we just want to see the width and the height. And then, of course, height plus sprite sheet dot get height stop it and run it and see our log oh that's a lot of text and then system dot out with 168 that doesn't look right because the sprite sheet we can stop it because the sprite sheet said 64 by 112 so that's almost three times the size in both width and height than we gave it. What's going on? And what is going on here is by default, it's trying to match our targeted phone with the size of the image, depending on the pixel density of our phone. That is not something that we need or want. So how do we get rid of it? What we can do here is to give it a third argument, which was options options or options and uh, we can just call it options like so and up here we can create a private bitmap factory dot options options equals new bitmap factory options and then this options dot in scale equals false and that gets rid of the scaling that's going on by default when it's trying to match the targeted phone and it should not be option, it should be option, so it's the same uh, object. And if we run this now, we should have a much smaller... So yeah, that looks far more correct. This is 16 by 16, each of these, and this entire one is 62 by 112 something. Let's take a look at our log cat, and we can stop it. With 64, height 112, and the image... And the image was 64 by 112. So yeah, we get the default size in our game. Perfect. Now, how do we get a specific sprite in this sprite sheet? We first need to know the size of, well, not only the sprite sheet, but the sprites themselves. And they are 16 by 16, and we have four in a row, and then seven in a column. So let's go to our game character, uh, actually game characters, plural. So right click, refactor, rename. It's a small difference, but since there will be more than just one character, characters seems to be more of a fitting name. So game characters, all right, that, that looks better. So in our game characters enum here, we can add a private bitmap array and just call them or we'll call it sprites and we're gonna load this sprite by using the sprite sheet uh, we can remove this system.out we don't need that anymore and we might as well set the size right away so equals new bitmap seven and four because there are seven in the column and four in the row so yeah and now in our constructor, we create a nested for loop. So int j equals zero, j, uh, j is less than sprites dot length, j plus plus, and then a other loop, int i equals zero, i is less than sprites, j dot length at that position, and then i plus plus, and sprites, j i equals and and to get a smaller bitmap from a larger one we say bitmap dot create bitmap the source which is sprite sheet then we need a position and it's going to be 16 times i and then 16 times j and for width, we have 16 and then 16. 
and that is going to iterate throughout this two-dimensional sprite array and now to get any of those sprites we need a getter so public bitmap uh, get sprite and we're going to ask for int y position in the array or 2d array and then int x position in the 2d array so return sprites j and not j y pos and then x pos and we will get the specific sprite that we want so let's try it game panel we're drawing our entire sprite atlas there then let's just go ahead and see dot draw bitmap game characters dot player dot get sprite uh, let's see which one should we get let's get the first one the one facing us and then we need a position for it let's put it 200 and 200 and null for paint and let's run this and see what we get and we have it right there it's very tiny so we need some way of scaling this up and we're going to create a method in here and it will be a private bitmap get scaled bitmap we're gonna call it all right and we will need a bitmap the bitmap we're trying to scale up here so we're just gonna call it bitmap bitmap and then we will return the bitmap scale and the method is bitmap dot create scaled bitmap so we give it the source which is the bitmap and how big will it now be first we need a default size which we get from bitmap dot get width and then multiply by something and Let's just hard code it for now. Let's go with five. So five times in width from the from default. And then bitmap.get height times five as well. And filter is false. And the filter is just if we scale it up, do we want it to be smoothed out in the corners or do we want it to be pixelated? And we want it to be pixelated because this is a pixel game. So filter will be false. Now let's see how we get this method and the sprites to work together. And of course we could just copy this nested for loop and then just go through each sprite again, but that's redundant. We don't need to iterate through this uh, two dimensional array more than once. So let's just copy this method's name, put it in front and do like that because all get scale bitmap needs is a bitmap and this method right here that we use from bitmap is returning a bitmap so we just put the method inside another method if you will and now let's take a look so we have our default sprite here in the default size as we are giving it to the project in our project folder and here is the scaled up version of it pretty cool and we might actually increase it once more in size so times six let's give it another go yeah that's good enough for now it's something we can change later we most likely will change it later but for now we just hard code it in here times six and yeah that's how we get our player in our game as an image and of course in our game panel we can select a different sprite so let's pick something like three and then three and let's see which one we get so three three is that one which would be uh, this one right here because this is zero 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 one zero two zero three etc so three three is this one which makes sense yeah it looks like it's working and if we want to get the last one, which would be 6, 3. Let's try 6, 3. And that looks to be correct. So yeah, we do have access to the Sprite Atlas, but also individual sprites. Let's say we want to add more characters to the game, because the enum is called game characters and not game character. So how do we do that? 
Well, first we need to know what we're going to add. And this sprite asset pack got a lot of different characters. We're using the red ninja. Let's, uh, let's add a skeleton. I think we had one, yeah. Skeleton. And what we're going to do is open up our project here. Drawable open already, perfect. And then I already named it, copied it and named it here. Draw it in, make sure it's in the drawable and not drawable version 24 or something else. Okay, the name checks out, perfect. And then we can minimize that or hide it. Skeleton, skeleton. Let's add a comma so it help, makes it easier for us. R.drawable.skeleton spreadsheet. All right, and that's it. Everything else is getting uh, done for us automatically. So all we need to do is to go to our game panel and say c.draw bitmap game characters dot skeleton dot get sprite sheet or get sprites uh, let's get sprite let's go with zero zero position 100 and 600 and then of course null for paint let's see what happens how it looks and we have our skeleton in our game it's that simple. And of course, we're not going to add the character, the player, or any type of enemies this way. But yeah, this is how we get images into our game. But we can do one more thing, and that is to change the player, get sprite. We're going to keep, we can keep that sprite, but the position will be X and then Y. And we can uncomment that one. And for our on touch event, then we can just say x equals event get x, y equals event get y, just like that. Run it, and wherever I press, the player appears. And to increase the spice just a little bit about our little skeleton here, so there's a lot of skeletons, uh, let's create a array list of skeletons or positions rather we don't need we don't have any game objects or game enemies but private array array list of the type point f that we've been using before point floats and we're going to call them skeleton skeletons equals new array list nothing special there and in our constructor we can initialize a lot of skeletons or position of skeletons so for int i equals zero i is less than let's start with 10 i plus plus then skeletons dot add new point f and we still have random so for the x position we're gonna go with rand next int and it will be 1080 we don't need to be plus one there but 1080 and for y let's add uh, zero like that so there will be a random position for x up to that and then of course y all will start on the same one and in our update here we can make a for loop so four point f Pos positions and then skeletons post dot y plus equals uh, da, 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 delta times what did we use 300 300 let's go with 300 and see what happens and then we are done almost no let's encapsulate this and let's go with if Post dot y is more or equal than what was it 1920 post dot y equals zero so it resets let's see how this looks and nothing happens that's because we don't render it let's remove this uh, skeleton and uh, copy this one 
and say c dot draw bitmap game characters dot skeleton dot get sprite zero zero and the position will be of course be post dot x and then post dot y and for paint we go null we don't need any paint there so now we should be able to see something actually and we have falling skeletons but that looks it's not randomized enough. Let's uh, stop it. And let's add a random for y as well. So rand.nextInt1920, but add 50 skeletons. Let's run it. And now we have falling skeletons. All right, it's looking good. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. This was a example of how we can add images to our game. And we will use enums like this as a cornerstone of adding, for example, images, but also adding values, constant values to the player, skeleton, etc. Because we're not limited to just one thing here. We can add more, we can add health, we can add speed etc and all of that is stored in the enum and then we just add a getter to get that specific value or to do something with that value but that's for coming episodes later but for now this is as far as we're gonna take this episode i hope that you enjoyed it if you did hit that like button and subscribe more videos is to come and take care now i hope to see you in the next video as well cheers <laughs>